we're off to Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Its blend of beautiful scenery, retail and leisure opportunities is renowned across the country. It's not just lakes, golf courses and malls that make this one of the best places in America to live. It's about income as well. Eden Prairie has one of the highest average family incomes around, and it's partly because of this. This is the largest 3D printing factory in the world. And the machines here are printing projects for various industries, including aerospace, medical, and even some top secret defense projects that we can't show you on camera. 3D printing is often described as the future of manufacturing, but here a hundred printers are already churning out thousands of 3D designs day and night for companies around the world. We call this technology stereolithography or three-dimensional printing. The technology behind 3D printing isn't new. Chuck Hall invented additive manufacturing in 1983 with 3D systems but its applications are rapidly evolving. One of the exciting areas to me is uh, materials. Right now we have 13 different types of thermal plastics that we can run on a, on a FDM machine. There's over 77,000 thermal plastics available out there, so you have this wide range of materials out there, and as we bring more material offerings, it's just gonna open up more opportunities for different types of applications. NASA is using the technology in its next Mars rover project with 70 parts 3D printed on its latest space vehicle. They only are going to build one of those or maybe two of those. So to go and do tooling for just real specialized components would be very high cost. It might cost, you know, $50,000 or $20,000 just to create the tool only to produce one part. So this technology is perfect for that, where you only need one of something, and it's very unique. There's a better world to come in, tell you why, why, why. Closer to home, the 3D printing revolution might help some of America's struggling cities. This is Youngstown, Ohio, 800 miles south of the Stratasys factory in America's Rust Belt. Youngstown was at the heart of America's steel industry for decades, but the industry collapsed years ago, and many people left. Now, 3D printing is bringing new hope to the city. The area around Youngstown has been renamed the Tech Belt, and President Obama has committed to developing the 3D printing industry here. Last year, we created our first Manufacturing Innovation Institute in Youngstown, Ohio. A once shuttered warehouse is now a state-of-the-art lab where new workers are mastering the 3D printing that has the potential to revolutionize the way we make almost everything. It's hard to imagine a revolution when you see it from the outside. All right, welcome to America Makes. Let's go down to the factory floor. Great. This building was an abandoned furniture factory, now reimagined as a factory floor where people can come to learn about 3D printing and manufacturing. This first machine is the uh, S Pro 60 from 3D Systems. Right. This white material is called uh, Doraform PA. It's a nylon 11 type right. material. So it's got all the mechanical properties of nylon 11. And what would you make with this? Oh, uh, it's a favor for aerospace, automotive, uh, medical. $30 million has been invested in the America Makes project in Youngstown by the White House. Another $40 million has been invested by a group of 80 companies and universities. The America Makes project is managed by the National Center for Defense Manufacturing and Machining. So manufacturing 3D parts for the military is top of the agenda. Beyond space and fighter jets, 3D printing is expanding rapidly at the consumer manufacturing level too. This is the MakerBot factory in New York. It recently moved from a small office into a 50,000 square foot space. We're all about inspiring the next industrial revolution. In fact, some people even use MakerBots to do manufacturing and they make stuff and they do kind of runs of a thousand or a couple thousand things and sell them that way. So for me it's about empowering people to be able to make things and really getting back to the basics in terms of manufacturing. Anybody with a MakerBot can get a jump start on the next industrial revolution. Countries all over the world are making huge investments in 3D printing and this is what the future of global manufacturing could look like. <laughs>